Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you back to the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2021. Thank you so much for being with me today and each day on this journey. Our tangle for today is called Shattuck. It is a Zen Tangle original pattern and we are going to take it on a ride today. Now some of you are probably going, Shattuck, we've done Shattuck a thousand times. Well, we're going to do it one more. We are going to explore some of the things that maybe you haven't thought of doing with Shattuck and maybe sh uh, brush it off and give it some new shine. All right, let's get started. Today I'm going to be working on a gray Zentangle tile. I'm going to be using a black PN and perhaps a black 01. And I'll probably use my graphite pencil and a white charcoal pencil. All right, so I'm gonna try drawing my string in white charcoal today in hopes that you can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with my squared off, oh, that's not any better, is it? It's a little better. With I'm gonna start with my, sorry about that, I'm gonna start with my squared off border. And then for string today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhere on this tile and it doesn't matter where. If you would like something that looks like it comes out from the center, then put your dot on, in the center. Of course, me being me, I'm not gonna put my dot in the center. Uh, I like to put my dots uh, up there on the, on the top left. <laughs> Don't ask me why, it's a personal choice. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, and this is another thing that you guys can choose on your own. Well, let me just show you my little example. This is what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to put that dot wherever we want to, and then we're going to go around and we're going to add Shattuck. Now, you don't have to add it in every space, but we're going to start from the dot, and we're going to go out and we're either going to make straight or curvy lines or a mixture of both, whatever you want to do. All right. So we're going to use this as our center point. And of course, I'm going to use curvy lines because I can and it's me. And so from that point out, I'm just going to make some, some lines that come out from that center. And again, these can be curvy, they can be straight, they can go however you want them to. Hopefully you're still seeing this. I think you see it better than I do. You can put as few or as many as you want until you have that all filled up, yeah? Now, one of the things that, that I did in prep for uh, Shattuck today was I looked at a very cool article, a blog post by Margaret Bremner, CZT. She is in Canada. And she um, made me think, I knew when I saw she did an and then some article on this. And she is famous for her and then sums on the uh, original tangle. She has them for Cadent and um a bunch of others. So uh, she always brings some outside the box thinking. And one of the things that I loved that she did was she tried separating out with with more than just her standard uh, straightish or curvish um, arid line. So that's one thing that I want to play with today or the sort of wide, fun, funky um, edges. And then, of course, she used uh, both curved and straight tangles. She tried, She used tangle tangles, like um, uh, we could do a crescent moon in these. Uh, this one was my version of her doing flukes, I think, in hers. Um, I started this with radiating out and then uh, from sort of a crescent moon beginning and then uh, sort of morphed into just coming out from from the uh, center point. But again, 
you can do whatever you want. This one is simply striped and done in a straight fashion, which in this space did not work very well, but you live and you learn. And the other thing you can also do is make these things wider and decorate them. So uh, you, can, you can let the sky be the limit and have some fun with this. Um, Margaret's um, and then some article is linked on Tangle Patterns because Linda Farmer is awesome like that. And um, you can get there from the Shattuck post on Tangle Patterns. Okay, it's, it's, uh, I think the link is down at the bottom. All right, so uh, I'm going to get my PN out and get started with my string, okay? So this is sort of what I'm thinking about. And um, since I have done Shattuck many, 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 many times, many times, um, I'm pretty pretty familiar with it. And so that's uh, I'm going to be uh, a little freer with my stuff today. But uh, if anybody is unsure of how to do that, um, there are tons and tons of videos on Tango Pattern patterns how to do the straight um the straight shattuck version all right so since my goal is to leave these sort of wide funky sections between mine because i'm me and i can and it's my art and blah 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 um let's see if i can do that i'm just going to take some of these and Sort of let them do their own thing. And This is going to be challenging, I think, but uh, fun. Now, some of these I'm going to make a little less intimidating. And you can see I've already decided to ignore my string and move things around. And you can certainly do that. Do whatever works for you. Some of these I might make a little bit less crazy. That one is fun. Although, well, I'm going to R the inside anyway. I'm going to make that one really large. And I need one more here, I think. And all right, so these are the edges. <laughs> And I'm still going to do some R-ing here. So uh, this is one. And so I'm going to R the inside edge of this if I can. All right, so that's not too bad. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm doing this first because if I wait, then I'm going to get confused on which ones are the spaces and which ones are the where I'm drawing. You know what I mean. So this is my way of whoops, making things a little more clear for myself. Now, as you are doing your Shattuck, particularly if you are an experienced tangler, I really want you to challenge yourself to try something that you have never thought of before with Shattuck. 
and whether it be one of the examples that I gave or one of Margaret's or um, one of your own, it doesn't matter. There is no rule for how this is done. Now, another option also is to leave one of these blank or every other one blank or something like that. Um, I think I'm going to aura the inside of this one simply because I don't have a lot of room there where we're coming in. And here. If I'd done both of those sides there, that would have been difficult. I can't stress enough the importance of this internal aura that I'm always using. Um, sometimes you, you may want to not do that, and but I want you to have a purpose in mind for leaving it off. Um, I, I want this to be your, your go-to thing. It's, it's a great habit to be in simply because it helps your, your, your patterns, your sections, whatever it is that you've got going on. It helps them not to get confused with each other. And so uh, that's, that's the reason that I learned for, for this. And uh, when I have forgotten it, I get something very, very different and frequently not at all what I was hoping for. So... Um, something to think about. Remember, shifting your tile slightly can make a big difference in your stroke, in your hand position. And of course, I'm making mine look crazy and curly. And uh, if you guys are wanting to do straight out, you certainly can do that. All right. So now this is my, this is my reticula or reticulum. I'm never sure which one is plural. Uh, it's one of those two for uh, the pattern shattuck. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I think I'm going to step it out for you over here in this one. Sorry about my voice. Um, because it's it's pretty normal looking and, and I can't get you into too much trouble like that, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, do I want to switch to my zero one? We'll try. I really want to switch to my zero one because I'm messy with this pattern. And um, if I have a smaller nib, I tend to get in less trouble. Not no trouble, but less trouble. All right. Okay, so let's see. Shattuck can be done with straight lines or curved lines. What I'm going to demonstrate here is right now is with curved lines, but you may can just as easily do this exact same thing with them straight. Okay, so what you do is you start at the point wherever you are, and you're going to make a slightly curved line from one point on one side to a higher point on the other. Let me zoom for you. Okay, and then underneath that, we're going to put our lines and try to make them as consistent and equal to this one as possible. See, that's not so hard. I'm gonna shift our tile slightly and we're gonna go the other direction. We're gonna start where we left off and make another curved line come down and don't do what I did and get in a rush and overshoot your lines. Your overall creation is going to be much, much nicer if you can just take a deep breath. In fact, I forgot. So let me make up for time. Lost. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Let your shoulders drop down. Let your arm relax. I have noticed that I am getting more and more anxious 
the tireder I get, and the more anxious and tired I get, the less uh, time I take for things like breathing, and that is the exact opposite of what I should do. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Shattuck because I'm not very good at it, but I love the pattern. So, <laughs> I have drawn it a lot, but not very successfully a lot. So, we're going to give this a try and see how we do today. So, once you have filled each section, you're just going to shift your tile slightly and make another section going the other direction. and repeat. You can sparkle these if you like, or not. But I highly recommend going and checking Margaret's uh, blog post, and then it's called Shattuck and Then Some, I think. It was in January on her blog called The Enthusiastic Artist, or just Enthusiastic Art. I'm not sure. I think it's the, but it doesn't matter. If you Google her name and uh, Enthusiastic Artist, you will find her blog. Now, when you're using a space that is not uniform, so curvy, or it gets smaller and bigger like this one will, you have to sometimes use a little imagination and take your time. Now, if you've got things, situations, some of them are going to be bigger. Now, I am challenging you with this string. If you need to do Shattuck without all of this mess, please do. Just draw in some ribbon lines and um, ink your outer edges, these, and just go to town with this. This will be much easier in a sort of a straight, straightened out um, area, but don't feel like you can't try this if you want to, of course. So now this one is going to continue out of sight like this. It's going to be kind of big. But since I can't see that, what I'm going to do is look at this one here and try to match that curve. Oh, I was doing so well, too. But again, I will remind you, this doesn't matter. If the lines are a little off, it's not going to matter. Once the shading and all of that is done, it won't matter. And then in this instance, I'm just going to fill this section up with little pretend lines that go on. Okay? Now, I, I think I will agree that's not my best section, but, but you get the idea, right? Okay, now, the other thing to consider is whether or not you want to have these make a pattern between sections, all right? Now, <clears throat> now I'm already trying to remember which my between sections were. I think this is a between set. No, I think this is. So this probably would have been one, but that's okay. I can do what I want. So let me figure out what that's going to be. So I think I'm going to... do one here. Leave this as my crazy middle. Do this one, this one, and like that. Okay, so I'm going to put another one in here, and I'm going to match it for you and show you how to do that, although, again, varying degrees of success sometimes for me. 
So what you want to do when you want to match your sides is you want to do the mirror opposite in the section next. So here is where we started. Now, it's hard to guesstimate, and in this instance, we can't because it doesn't go down far enough. But what we want to do is start where the top is, take that down, and just do the best we can, okay? And then here, we're going to want to try to match the height I'm not doing very well with this. Let's see. And see, once you match them, I am going crazy with this one's short, or, okay, well, but that also illustrates a great point. You want your aura lines to be as consistent with each other as possible. I did a fairly good job here until I got to this. So here I put them really too close and here is about where I should have them. So that's something to think about as well. Something to think about. It's almost like I live in Oklahoma or something. <laughs> All right. Now, depending on the curves, you're gonna have uh, some differences between the sections, but you do your best to just line up the sections Sometimes they won't be exact. But you do your best and you don't worry about the rest. Now this is where I'm going to have some issues. So we're just gonna to have to do this and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. And now we're going to have this same situation that we had over here. Well, <laughs> that's still pretty close to that, so I'm going to live with it. So not great, but, but still, it'll be fine once we get everything shaded, I hope. All right, so this is my next section, and we're going to leave this funky section right here blank. All right. And so uh, in here, I'm going to want to do something kind of fun and outrageous and crazy. I, I don't know if I have anything like that, but I'm sure I can come up with something. Um, of course, they're going to be curvy because it's me and I can. But, oh, you know, it'd be, but could I? I could, but would it work? It would work, but it would it be shattic? I think that's the question. So probably not, but I'm thinking of bee light. And um, uh, well, I actually don't know for sure.
So what I'm gonna do on this one is ink the base instead of having the red lines, or you know, I could do crescent moon. Let's do crescent moon. Now I'm ignoring this over here, at least for now. Okay. Hmm, one more. And sometimes if you're going to be outside the box, the box is, you know, too small and you gotta make your own way. Yeah, I think we can sort of work more normally. Yeah, okay. Now at this point that I sort of have things sorted, if I want to sort of aim at uh, the general direction of this and give the impression that, that those are matching up too, then that's fine. But the rest of these, I'm not going to worry about them. They're too small. <laughs> Okay, and you can see these are not in any way perfect, and that's okay. <laughs> At least it has to be. So all I'm doing today is really challenging myself to use this tangle in ways. Simba. All I'm really doing today is challenging myself to use this tangle in ways that I've never done before. And so I want you guys to do that too. If you've never drawn this before, then maybe the challenge is just drawing it, and that is okay. But if you've drawn Shattuck more than once, and I know that most of you have, I really want you to try to step outside your comfort zone today and give this a try in a way that you normally would not do, okay? But even if you decide not to do this, um, it is worth taking a look at Margaret's post. It's on, baby. You said to make sure. Thank you. If you only knew why he checked. <laughs> well, most of you do know. He has to listen to the crying afterwards if I mess it up. So it's not a surprise. These are gonna naturally get larger as you go. I think I'll leave that. I know what you're thinking, and it's probably for the best.
Simba's outside making sure the neighbors feel welcome. <laughs> or not. Okay. Now, if you've seen, if you've learned nothing else from watching this, hopefully you have learned that they don't have to be perfect. It's still going to work. It's still going to work. Okay. So now I'm going to skip this one. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to put something in over here that's different as well. Let's see what I want to try over here. Uh, well, I could do a straight line version of this and have it look like flux, maybe. That won't necessarily work out really well. Um, let's just go opposite of this. And now this is going to go from tiny to huge in a heartbeat. Okay. Like that. I don't recommend drawing it this way because I get confused frequently on which direction has the auras and which one doesn't. but uh, I sort of wanted to get my bearings here. And I don't have to do anything. Look at my example over here. So what if we did this crescent moon type of a thing, but we didn't put the R lines in? There we go, see what I mean? It's confusing. And we could put radiating, we could turn our R lines going the other direction. I like that idea, let's do that. So instead of making them this way, I've made them, you know what I mean. So this is where my spot is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little weird looking, but I can live with it. I am sorry if there have been has been some weird content in the last few videos at the end particularly. I have been falling asleep in my post toasties as it were. That's a kind of cereal, an old kind of cereal. I don't even know if they have it anymore. But um, yeah, so uh, I may have missed some stuff that was supposed to come out. I was supposed to um, edit out a... Um, a uh, not nice word, and I'm afraid it's still in there, <laughs> so I'm sorry if it is. I don't usually say not nice words, but lately they have just been pouring out of my mouth. Hopefully I'm not getting Tourette's. I'm just kidding, that was mean. That would be awful though, wouldn't it? Marianne Peugeot, I just saw you answer my monk comment from yesterday. You rock, girl. You know who monk is. He's hysterical. All right. 
He's a private eye that it has an attention to detail, probably some sort of high functioning autistic or something. And um, um, <laughs> he, he's, he's funny. He's a neat freak, a clean freak. He's also OCD about germs. And so the whole thing is just, yeah, anyway. Okay, not that way, Cindy, this way. All right, it's not so bad. Definitely something different. Definitely a different way to look at things. I'm trying to look for my um, borderline. I can barely see it anymore, probably because I've scrubbed over it a couple of times. There's the end. So let's do this. You know, I ate lunch before I started recording today because I didn't want my stomach to be making noise during the recording. And of course, it is gurgling right along. It's just as happy as it can be right now. Disappointment. That's what I've got, disappointment. What, big dog? Are you wanting to come up and join me and keep my feet warm? It's like, no, but I'm looking for food. Come on, Jimba, here. Come on, big dog, here. He likes to make me think it's his idea when he comes up. Oh, no, he totally dissed me and left. All right, fine. Go hang out with brother, see if I care. Yeah, he's trying to tell us something. I'm just not sure what it is. Now, you can see this is fun. This is really fun. At least, I think it's fun. If I used my jelly roll to ink in or my white charcoal pencil to um, lighten these areas, it's going to look really cool, which I am, and it will. <laughs> All right, now the question is what to do next. So I really want to, want to try to fit a straight line version into this wiggly thing right here. I'm just not sure, but you know me, I like to try stuff on tiles and, and make life interesting for me. So we're just gonna try it. And draw it with a straight line. That's a lot of straight lines. Okay, interesting. Mm. you're not sure about the angle, look at the last one you drew. That should help you. Of course, if you're me, not always. Most of you guys are so talented. Thanks for hanging out with me. So this one will go this way. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. 
Well, it's straightish. So I'm going to sort of uh, morph this over by doing the same thing in each of them, but changing some of the details. We'll see how that goes. And by adding the inked areas, then then it sort of ties each other, uh, ties itself together with each one. Just the way the curved lines sort of uh, meld these. I really need to add something here just for my own sanity. I thought I could not do it, but but I can't. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Um, okay, where was I? Oh yeah. And if you're inking these, you can ink them as far up or as low down as you want. I'll do one more on this. Yeah. There we go. You can see it doesn't have to be a big thing. All it needs is a hint of something to help the eye get get on past that. It goes, oh yeah, there's that. Look at how those all tie together. At least that's my goal. Make your eyes lie to you today and to say, Cindy, this all ties together. All right. Interesting. This makes me want to put Batten over here, but I'm not going to because it's Shattuck Day. Bless you, baby. It was Simba's hot bread. Mm. Was that Simba or was it River? What you doing, little bit? Oh, did you get the soccer ball? It's time to replace Simba's soccer ball. River has learned to tear out the guts. Now, to be fair, Simba had already put a hole in it. Well, a couple of teeth holes. <laughs> and it was already flat, but she actually tore the guts out. All right, now, where am I? Back to square one. Um, let me think about this for a second. Um, okay, stop, Cindy, and think it through. So if I leave this blank and tangle here, leave this blank, I can tangle here. Which is, I think, what we're going to do. Now, if I do that, then I'm going to want to repeat this pattern over here. I mean, you don't have to, again. But it's, it's a nice touch. And so, once again, I'm looking at what I've got over here.
Did she steal your soccer ball, Simba? Oh, you got your toy? Fetch toy. Fetch toy. That dog knows the difference between rope, toy, ball, plushie, and his green froggy. He always knows about that. I'm, I'm going to need to get him another one of those because River has now eaten the head off of it. <laughs> She's a great companion, isn't she? All right, now, what are we doing? So this is going to have to go like this. And we're going to go like this. When you've got these curved ones, don't don't get um, bogged down in it has to be this way. Just sort of go with the flow. If it doesn't fit the way you've got it, don't worry about it. Had a stray line there. It's confusing me. Okay, better. Now, back. Now, here's my problem. So I'm going to have to really stretch it. And that'll work. Is she eating your food again, Simba? So every time I start to eat, she chases me off and eats out of my bowl. Then he goes to the other bowl, and she chases him off of that and eats out of that one. She's a little mess. Okay, so not perfect, but we got the point across here, right? Okay, and so this one will be, hmm, I forgot that one turned weird, didn't I? That means this one's going to be coming like this. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I, I like this. This has been fun for me to sort of figure stuff out. And so last shot here, um, I am going to do uh, let's find out what Cindy's going to do. Let's do, let's find out. Um, Let's do
So <clears throat> this was going to be my perky version of Shattuck, but um, it's not very perky. Definitely Orby, but not perky. All right, so something else. So I hope you guys have had some fun making some weird Shaddix today. I had actually intended to do something completely different. And then I saw a different video for something else and went, oh, that's cool. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. Now. Uh, so I'm going to get my P in and I'm going to do something that I don't know if you guys will want to do or not. So take a look at what happens with mine and then decide. Please don't don't jump right in. I don't know how it's going to be. But one thing I really like to do on Shattuck is just add a tiny bit of line weight to the outer uh, line in, in each section. Like this. It's really going to help accentuate the shading. And then I have these issues. So that's why, you know, do it, don't do it. It's up to you. Don't think I told you to. Not in the step out, not necessary, do you. But I just think it helps to sort of accentuate where you're going to be um, doing your shading, uh, sort of deepening that line where the shading goes to sort of enhance that overlap. I think it's going to give it a bit more finished look. But again, <laughs> I'm self-taught, so what do I know? I need to stop doing that. I might have learned a little bit. And if y'all want to learn from me, <laughs> then that's on you. No, I'm just teasing. All right. So I think I will do that over here as well, just very carefully. What this does is it emphasizes the pattern which I like. Take your time.
Where? There. Now, I think I'm ready to start shaving. Let's do that. <clears throat> So shading on Shattuck is really simple. Along every one of these lines where I just added the line weight, remember to shade on the mini line side, not on the one side. So where the lines come in here, that's where we wanna shade. Now, you may or may not want to shade when it gets really small down here. What's going to happen is you're going to have an overabundance of graphite down here, and it's all going to sort of mush together. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, as you will. And then try to be careful not to get it in your little sections uh, between. But uh, if you have a mono zero, it's ideal for this, exactly this kind of thing. Exactly. Thank you guys who left me words of encouragement uh, after yesterday's video. I appreciate it, especially from you other parents. Uh, it's hard to give words of wisdom as a parent, isn't it? Because you know that each child is different and uh, your approach to each child has to be different as well. So, yeah. Uh, one thing I do like to do in, in mind that you do not have to do is shade along the edge of your uh, arid line, outer line. It tends to sort of puff up the stuff in the middle, but um, you know, there are lots of reasons why uh, you might want to leave that off depending on what you're doing inside the section. Let's see. I have trouble shading, shading these kinds of things because I tend to work willy-nilly and then I forget where I'm at and what I've done and yeah, it's a work of forever. Thank you, Simba. Simba says hi to Chip today. Hi, Chip. Hi, Lynn. Who's a good pup? Hi, Chip. There. Mm. Hey, you're teaching you're teaching the other puppies bad bad tricks. Mm. Uh -uh. You're supposed to be a beacon of dog behavior here, buddy. Now you're just embarrassing your mom. I'm kidding. This is why he's not a public access service dog because we can't take him outside without the shenanigans. Take those away and he's just the best thing ever, but oh my goodness. Put something furry in his reach and he's like, oh, let's play. <laughs> I love that movie, Over the Hedge. Play? They have a Rottweiler in that at the very, at, towards the very end when the little animals, it's an animated movie for those who don't know. And uh, the animals are sneaking from, from the forest are sneaking through the hedge and into suburban homes and, um, you know, eating their food. And so uh, they're sneaking across a yard and all of a sudden one of them uh, hits a ball that makes a squeak or something like that, or stands on a squeaky toy. And the, Rott the Rottweiler pulls his head up really fast and he looks around and he goes, play, play. That's our Simba. He's all about the playing. Squeaky toy, oh my God, he is there for that. <laughs> Socks, yes, he'll steal them. Yes, ma'am. Shoes, only if he's trying to get your attention and you won't pay him attention. He is a wonderful, wonderful 150 pound mess. And we love him. I've never had a dog like him before. He's just awesome. I've been on a Simba kick lately, haven't I? It's because he's just awesome. Now, in cases like these, the shading over by the edge is a nice touch. 
especially when they're big like this and they've got a long ways to go. Really get right up on your, on your thick line, at least my thick line. Okay, and moving forward. And even on these, when the lines are going the same direction, that's okay. You can also shade, if you're gonna do this version, you can shade up from the inked spot in the middle. And these down here, I wouldn't even bother with. I mean, you can graph, graphite on them, but uh, it's just gonna muddy things up there. And this is the reason I chose the gray today because I'm gonna be able to put a very nice highlight in here when I'm done. All right. Okay. And we're almost there. Simba, settle down, baby. All right. All right. Let's get the tortillon out and see how much trouble I got into with all this graphite. like I want a smaller one. This is already not a big one. Oops, I forgot something. This is why we have the Mono Zero, because in these situations I go crazy. Crazy, I say. Now some of these spots I may need to bring in my Mono Zero and, and um, lift out some of this uh, graphite if I get too much. So far uh, this isn't too bad, but then I haven't gotten into the tiny sections yet, so. And I may bring, yeah. I think I just won't blend this so I can keep my graphite in the right place. Or maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it this way and lift some of it out with the Mono Zero. Okay, but you see what I mean. By the time you've blended this, it's all one big graphite mess. So um, some places it's just not worth it. All right, that's the next round. Let's do this round. River says hi to Chip. She's ready to get her tooth taken care of and hates that we have to wait two weeks more. Or three. 
until the 12th of April do we get to go. I don't know what that means, but hmm. <laughs> I think I got most of it now mono zero let's just go and lift out anything extra in these little tiny spots between some of these are hard to get into but that's why this little eraser is so nice to have for tangling it's if, if for no other reason just to clean up these little ribbon tangle spots Because what happens with other erasers is you try to take that out, you end up lifting your graphite, and then you're redoing your shading, and it's just a pain. And this just fits in there so nicely. take out some of this extra here in the middle so that my um, white charcoal will lay down nice and smoothly. And that's the other reason this Mono Zero is awesome. And, you know, kneaded erases are great, but they don't have the, the hard point that these do, at least. Um, I mean, you can make the point um, hard, uh, but it's still not hard like this one. And so the lift up uh, on this one is just a, a tiny bit better, I think, than a kneaded eraser. But, of course, use what you have on hand. And you guys see me use my kids' um school pencil eraser all the time around here that was christmas three years ago and nothing wrong oops i forgot to blend what oh, i missed a spot didn't i i'm easily distracted these days can't figure out why Wait, wait, I know. Okay, now. 
this is the ink work and what I think I'm gonna do up here is stick my chop in because it's just the perfect little spot for a chop. Bottom heavy. <laughs> Yes, I know, me too. Okay, so um, as we, see, before I start, I wanted to um, address something. I got a comment from somebody about that they're, they have trouble um, sharpening their charcoal pencils, the tips breaking off and all of that stuff. And um, I really recommend that if your pencils came with an eraser, um, then uh, you should, or I know, with an eraser, come on, Cindy. If your pencils came with a pencil sharpener, then use the one they came with, um, as long as they're decent pencils. Um, if the point is breaking off a lot um, when you scrub and you're having the point break off with that, then that's probably a cheap pencil. If it's got hard spots when you, when you try to smoothen on, that's probably a cheap pencil. Uh, that's one reason I'm so passionate about these general passionate about these generals pencils is because I don't have those problems with them. Now, when you when you sharpen them, I don't recommend an electric pencil sharpener for these. I think they do better um, with their own little sharpener. But you have to be careful. You don't want to push in too hard. You know, give it time to sort of sharpen up. And you don't need a really sharp point on these unless you're going to be digging in for some reason. So um, um, it may have to do with the quality of the pencil that you're working with. Um, um, so, you know, just try some different things. And if, 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 it all el if all else fails, try some of these General's pencils. And then you guys tell me, are they better quality? Because the ones, the other ones I've tried have been... Um, these have been a tremendous um, difference as far as quality, better quality than, than the others that I've tried. But I haven't tried that many types. So uh, I'm really, really interested to know what you guys think about the kinds that you use. And particularly those of you that are in Europe, I really would love to hear from you uh, on your uh, white chalk uh, charcoal. I mean, uh, or do you use something else? Um, I just don't know. This is something I, I have not um, addressed with anybody I know in Europe. And so I've sort of been off on my own lately. It's just not a good thing. It's a necessary thing, though. Okay. Now, so I'm going to take my white charcoal now. And I'm going to start with that in places like this where I've got spots that are shaded on either side and not in the middle. And if you notice, I'm using the, the side of this pencil, not the tip. So I'm sort of smoothing it on by rubbing the side of the pencil on. And if you're having trouble with it going on, you might want to switch to the tip. But in general, you get a smoother lay down if you do it like this. And I frequently go in little circles the same way that I handle my colored pencils. Okay. And if you've got graphite in the middle, make sure that you try to lift that up with your eraser before you put down the white charcoal or you might get mud. And I'm, I'm not fa a fan of muddy stuff. Here we go. Now, if I was a better person, I would go in here and orb each individual one. And I'm not saying that I won't at some point, but at this point, uh, not so much.
my chop will get over it. It'll be fine. It'll still show. All right, and then in here, same thing. At the where these curves are seem to be the apex of them, where they bulge out the most. That's where you want to put your charcoal in. Don't be afraid to put lots on there. And if your charcoal pencil doesn't perform like this, then you probably should look for a different brand. Charcoal pencils are like jelly rolls. They're really frustrating when they don't work well. And I can't say this enough when we're working with white charcoal on your art. Make sure that when you're done and you have blended everything and you're happy with your result that you use that workable fixative on it, that spray. Uh, you'll find it in the paint section of the hardware store, probably. Definitely in the, your art supply stores on Amazon, my Amazon shop. Uh, has a link to the kind I use here in the U.S. And if you live outside the U.S., that link may or may not take you someplace you want to go. Um, I'm still working on that. I just haven't had time to um, uh, learn how to integrate all of the other countries yet. Each year, it gets a little bit better. And each year, I hope to improve. Each year, I cringe at the year before. <laughs> so I guess that's good. All right, a little bit more here. And I'm going to use the flat side of my charcoal in hopes that I can have a nice smooth lay down. Once you get a nice smooth spot, and it's flowing or working well, then that's a good spot to work with. Okay. I'm gonna have some blending to do on this. You, you may or may not be able to tell I'm really uh, putting a good layer down and I'm letting myself rub it into the tooth of the paper. Charcoal fades uh, really quickly when you rub across it, so I'm not, I'm not particularly concerned about getting too much on this. Now, what you do absolutely want to avoid is getting it on your ink because you'll have to ink over it in order to get it to go away. It's not something that erases particularly well. All right, so I had one other thing I wanted to do with this pencil, but I think first I want to blend over all of this and see where I'm at. So I'm just going to lift off most of the graphite on the tip. If there's a little bit, it's not a big deal. And, and I'm going to do that on the side. And uh, you can, if you want... I'm trying to think, um, and E. Oaken had a suggestion for this, and I'm trying to remember what it was, a way to keep the fuzz off the ends of your tortillon, but I'm, I, it's some, some sort of wax or oil or something. Any, somebody in art club, tell me what I'm thinking. Tell me what I'm trying to think of. What she has put, uh, it'll come to me here in a second. Oh, wax paper. She has you she has you use wax paper and rub your tortillon over the the wax paper and it helps the tip of your your tortillon not to be so fuzzy. So, a uh, great idea, great thought. I don't know if that was Annie's idea or somebody else's, but it's a good one. And now I'm just going to blend these gently. I do want to smooth my charcoal out, but I also don't want to lift it all off. And then we may come back in with our graphite 
and sort of darken up some of these again. The point of this blend is to just uh, blend out the, the streaky um, marks from the charcoal, not to take away from the color. And so sometimes you, we get it too far over in the corners uh, where we want there to be depth. And so it's just nice to be able to go back in and sort of smooth everything out. Let's see, like right there, I need to go over the ink there. I wonder why we never see those spots when we're inking. <laughs> or is that just me? It's not just me, is it? How are my enders today, since I know you're the only ones on? How are my enders? Y'all know you're the best people on the face of the planet, right? You really are. And not just because you watch me, but because clearly you have discerning tastes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so I'm just going to take my graphite pencil and just really right around the edges, just enhance this depth. I won't do it everywhere, but the ones that pop out to me, I think. It's, it's the difference, I think, between the highlighting and the shading that makes these gray tiles and the Renaissance tiles so very effective. I was pretty pumped by my result last night from um, uh, Elena Babayant's uh, pattern, um, Adri. Isn't that a cool pattern? I know some of you liked it. Uh, I didn't hear from very many of you, but it was sort of released late in the day yesterday, so you guys may be catching up with me, and I do apologize for that. Um, yeah, and the Zoom thing, I'll, I will work on it as soon as I get a chance. It's easier for me to live stream. However, that said, there are reasons that I don't necessarily like the live stream um, format. Um, number one, it doesn't give me the opportunity to read and respond to your comments directly. Rather, I have to have somebody else um, reading them to me, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I can't imagine how much nicer that would be for me to just be able to hear your voice. And uh, so we'll, we'll keep working on it. Um, uh, I need to get, get with Mari. His school schedule is going to be changing uh, here in another week or so. He's going to be going back four days a week. So I think uh, this coming Friday is the last day that he will be home in the afternoon on Friday for a while until summer anyway. And so if we wanted to try to do a live stream this coming Friday, that might be a possibility if he will agree. Will he agree, baby? Will he agree? Well, I was saying that this would be your last, this coming Friday would be your last Friday before you had to be in school on Friday afternoons. And I, and I would ask you and see what you thought about doing a live stream on Friday. Yeah. Yeah? All right. So live stream Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. Central, now daylight time. I don't know what that does to the rest of you in the world. I'm going to have to look that up and check. Are we the only place in the world that changes our times? I don't know. We do so many weird things. Okay, so the last thing I'm thinking of doing for this, and I really like what I've got. I will have to go back and re-ink some spots, I think. But the last thing I want to do is to um, put some white, either jelly roll or charcoal pencil, on these wide spots. And I'm thinking I'll use my charcoal pencil. And I had a spot here that I wanted to fix up because it was bothering my OCD soul. There you go, that looks so much better, see? All right. All right, let's try 
try this out. See what happens. Now here is where a point on your pencil would be very effective and helpful. I'm going to do this next one. I'm really considering the jelly roll for these to really make them turn white. And I'm thinking about going over my, my aura lines there and just getting right up next to the sections. So I, I'm not sure what I'm going to decide, and I'm sort of afraid. This is one of those tiles that I want to take pictures of before I start experimenting. That way, if, if I go south with things, I, I can put a different picture up. <laughs> It doesn't happen often, but it has happened. I, I won't lie to you, it's the truth. And once again, workable fixative is the way to go with these. If you're gonna use white charcoal on them. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like the stark white against the, the interesting backgrounds. Uh, I'm not saying that I won't go in there and use Jelly Roll on this whole thing because I'm, I'm seriously considering uh, doing that. Which, in which case I probably shouldn't have put charcoal all over it, but you know, there you go. There. And so then I need And of course, once you've done this, then the chances are extremely high that you'll have to go back with your ink pen and redraw your lines. Because we have obscured them with the charcoal. But basically, this is where I'm going with this. I hope you guys have enjoyed exploring the Tangle Pattern Shattuck a little bit more in depth and uh, maybe thinking about it outside the box. And I especially want to thank Margaret Bremner for her excellent post uh, on her blog, The Enthusiastic Artist, about Shattuck and then some. So uh, thank you guys for being with me today. I'm going to see you tomorrow for a day I don't even know anymore. 58? Wow. We're in the last half. So we're going to do it. We're going to make it. Thank you guys for being with me and I'm going to see you tomorrow.